Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today, oh boy, do we have a special treat for you. This is Marvel Comics Super Special number one, Kiss. Okay, 40 pages of full-color comics plus never-before-published photos and features printed in real Kiss blood. <laughs> I remember when this came out, and I didn't like Kiss at the time. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think I liked Kiss until senior year of high school. Um, and part of that is because Kiss wasn't played on the radio. Uh, and they, they talk about that in, in, in an article in, in this comic magazine, the, how, how Kiss was, was like very, pretty much banned on the radio. All right, so here we got, you know, some jerk wrote $1.90 on it. Uh, I it just drives me this, this cover is just awesome, awesome cover. And let's open up Kiss. Oh, I just want to acknowledge my friend Dan has been asking me to do this comic forever. And for whatever reason, I just been, I, I it's not that I've been putting it off. I can't, I just kind of forgot about it. So there you go. So that's, that's the truth. So let's, we got Ace Freely. For those of you who do not know anything about Kiss, we got Ace Freely. He's the guitarist, Space Ace. This is Peter Chris. He's the, he's the drummer. That's Gene Simmons. The demon, oh, uh, Peter Chris is the cat. Uh, Gene Simmons is the demon. He's the bass player, and that's Paul Stanley, the love child, love object, the the uh, the singer. And there we go. Look at these crazy boots, and let's open it up. Okay, welcome to the Marvel universe. This is brilliant because they Marvel knew that a lot of people were gonna were gonna uh, get in on this because of Kiss, who weren't really comic book fans. So they so they wanted to capitalize on it. So they're advertising some some. Marvel comic, and they're not just advertising superhero comics. So we got a uh, Spider-Man. You know, Spider-Man is the most popular. Howard the Duck. Why Howard the Duck? Because uh, uh, Steve Gerber wrote this comic, and he also wrote Howard the Duck. So, so uh, you know, little little homage. There. And then we got Conan the Barbarian. Um, I think for two reasons. I think Gene Simmons was a big Conan the Barbarian fan, and again, they're, they're just trying to mix up the the, the, uh, the genres to get you interested in, in uh, Marvel comics. So you know, you don't like superheroes, we got some barbarians. You like barbarians, we got this like political commentary satire, which is what you know, I, I wouldn't touch Howard. The funny thing is, I didn't like Kiss, I didn't like Howard the Duck, I didn't like Conan, but I, I you know I like Spider Man. So there you go. So let's look at this this this. This is the opening credits page. So let's look at the edition first. A Marvel Comics Super Special. So this is uh, volume one, number one, 1977, $1.50. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we understood what year this was. The contents, kiss and tell, and an, audit uh, and an auditorial, an editorial, a brief biography of Dr. Doom. I'll talk about that. Kiss Comics, part one, a blind barbarian, an ancient curse, a mystic metamorphosis, and more. Blood on the plates. Okay. Where No Band Has Tread Before, Kiss Comics Part 2, and then Backstage. And here's all the credits. Uh, okay. Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Peter Chris, Eight Freely. You understand why they get top billing, even though they didn't write or draw any of this. Because they are, they are the uh, the cause de celebrity, the uh, the, uh, the the demi-urges of, of this comic. You know, the prime, the prime movers. It's written and produced for Marvel Comics by Steve Gerber. I already talked about Steve Gerber, who's the writer and creator of Howard the Duck. I, I'm not sure if he created Man-Thing. I should look that up. Okay. Uh, pencil pencil artist, artist, uh, Alan Weiss, John Buscema, Rich Buckler, Sal Buscema. Just, just, who's, it's just a who's who of, like, Marvel talent at the time. Alan Milgram, embellisher, Marie Severinsen, co uh, colorist, John Costanza and Irv Wannabe, calligraphers, so that means they're the letterers, uh, and... Don't mean to be mean, but who really cares about the uh, the, the, the editing team? <laughs> so here we have Kiss and Tell. What is this? This is an article written by Steve Gerber about the origin of this of this comic. So let's just check out this this picture. I mean, look at it. there's Steve Gerber, Gene Simmons, Stan Lee, Peter Chris, Ace Freely. That's Alan Weiss, Paul Stanley, and that's Kiss's manager, uh, Bill Okun Okoin. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Okay, so opinion by Steve Gerber. What what I like about this is uh, Steve Gerber's 29 when he wrote this back in 1970, uh, 1977. And he's saying he's too old for this music and it's too loud and he doesn't particularly like it. And he talks about how that's kind of bizarre because he was a DJ in college and he, you know, he likes music. Kiss was too crazy. Guys, I cannot stress the importance of how shocking kiss was at the time nowadays we look at them as, as kind of goofballs you know they're, they're almost like you know uh 
the punchlines of their own joke. But at the time, they were shocking. They this was like, you know, Kiss was the 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 big freaky thing. I'm, I'll leave it at this because this is just a, a, a article. They, they they were, you know, parents were outraged by them. You know what I mean? Like to the point, like I didn't again. I didn't really like them until until senior year of high school. Partially because uh. I, I never heard their music, <laughs> and, and uh, I might as well tell this story. The very first time I ever knew anything about Kiss, I was in second grade, and I'm walking down the hallway, and there was this nasty girl. I can't remember her name, but she was big, she was fat, she was ugly, and and she was mean. You know, she's the trifecta of horribleness. And she was wearing a shirt that just said Kiss, and I forget what she said, but she said something to one of my friends like a nasty comment. And I just said, kiss who would want to kiss you. I didn't even know it was a band. You know, I just thought she was like, kiss, so, you know, and everybody left because that, that's a sick burn in second grade. <laughs> and, uh, so Steve Gerb is talking about how, uh, as part of the deal, I'm about to go back to this kiss until as a part of the deal of, of, uh, writing this, this, this comic magazine, as they call it, he, he got taken up to Toronto and got to see the band, you know, so he, he had press seats. He, he met the band. Obviously here he is pictures with them. And, uh, he said he grew to really like the music. He's like, how he goes, it wasn't until, uh, uh, rock and roll all night party every day came on that. He was just like, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So he, he kiss won him over. He said they were charming. They were cool backstage. You know, how much of this is just fan press? You know, how much of this is honest? I don't know. But, uh, you know, I like Kiss too, despite the fact that they're kind of jerks. <laughs> so why is this here? A brief bi biography of Dr. Doom. Because it's, it's Dr. Doom is the, is the main bad guy. So they're, they're doing the smart thing of introducing a new fan base of, 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 to these characters. This is funny. This is like set in Marvel continuity. So as far as I'm concerned, in the, in the Marvel 616, Kiss have superpowers. <laughs> and, and they're they're tangentially related to Doctor Doom. <laughs> so this is a nice little biography of Doctor Doom. Here we got like a little pinup, and we'll talk about this. But supposedly the uh, the the ink had had kiss blood in it, which was like shocking at the time, you know. And it's funny because uh, Mark Gruenwald, I think his ashes were mixed in with uh, with ink for uh, the Squadron Supreme. So there you go, Kiss set the precedent. But you know, this was like demonic really this was this was shocking guys i got i got i got to uh, point that out a million times so here we got steve gerber alan weiss alan milgram sal bisima and uh, sean delaney creative consultant so this this is the artist so here we have the actual comic themselves and when i first started reading this i thought they were going for like a a, a real biography and then they were going to you know change it up later but this is you know kind of kind of autobiographical and then fantastical put it so that's gene and and, and uh and uh, uh uh paul you know their friends in brooklyn and gene's getting a little uh disillusioned he what, what's 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 up he he uh his father wants him to throw away all of his comic books you know conan stop because gene simmons in real life was was a big marvel fan matter of fact the the, the, the gene simmons costume and and stage presence was, was modeled after a uh, black bolt you know, he makes no bones about saying it was a Black Bolt homage, ripoff, whatever you want to call it. So he's like, should I do this? You know, I've become an accountant. My father said he could get me a job, you know, I went, you know, and so they're just like one last time. So they were in bands. The bands were going nowhere. But the father's like, OK, you're, you're in your 20s now. It's time for you to grow up. And he's starting to like, you know, whatever. And then they meet this this guy, this what do they call him? Dizzy. And Dizzy is just this this freaky Manhattan homeless character you know there's a whole bunch of them you know some of them become like famous homeless characters is the only way to describe them like the the naked cowboy or whatever and he's like oh he's blind and he's he's fighting off everybody he's fighting off everybody they they want something so he's like yeah by the gods they're here they've come so he throws this box he's like take it hide this and uh he, he's like we got to get out of here the next thing you know all the uh, these goons are coming after him so what do we got? We got Ace Fre Freely and Peter Chris in, in the arcade. They're playing pinball. Again, pinball was super big, guys. So, you know, they hit all the 70s tropes. And, you know, Peter Chris is playing the drums on the machine because he, he's got that rhythm. He's got that music. Who could ask for anything more? And he and Ace Freely is getting like a million points on, on one ball. And he's like, I'm getting bored over here. You know, that's how, that's how good he is. And uh, as he runs in, they're like, here, quick, take this. And... Uh, 
he's like, okay. And he's like, wow, this is really cool. You know, like, what is it? What is it? And then look at this guy's face. That's a, that's a, a uh, fringe. Fringe is like, where is it? We got to tear this place apart. So they're not looking at them. They don't know that they're part of the team. And they're just like, this box is cool. It's kind of pretty. Like, it's it's pretty box I've ever laid hands on. So they're going into the photo booth. And all four of them are hiding out there. What's going on? You know, they all, all four of them touch this box. And here come the goons. And he's like, let's open it up. And they couldn't open it up until all four of them are there. And then there's these totems. I think it's funny that he gets a wooden star and they all get like little wooden action figures. They all take them and explosion bubble and they are now Kiss. The name of the box, uh, it had a weird name. Uh, it, it'll show up again. But it, it's pronounced Kiss. It was the box of Kiss, but it was K-H-Y-S-S-S-C-H. -S 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 you know, Kish. So I, you know, I was like... I didn't make the connection until the end of the book when I was like, oh, it's pronounced kiss because I'm a stupid person. So, boom, this they all come out dressed like this. You know, they are all transformed. So that's the secret origin of kiss. He's like, look at them. They open up the box and Gene Simmons jumps out and shoots fire. Ah, you know, I love that. I love that picture. So uh, Peter Chris, he's agile like a cat. So he's jumping around like all feral and wild like Wolverine. And he's jumping and taking them out. And then this is Paul Stanley. He's he's a... Uh, Faced off against the guy with nunchucks, and he just stares. Up. He just uh, stares at him. He can control all emotions now. So this guy's like, guys, I'm all calm. I don't want to fight. And Space Ace, he he, uh, what, what us? Uh, Ace Freely, he has like the power cosmic. Yeah, you know, he or whatever. Like not not like the Silver Surfer, but he could he could like shoot laser beams. And then what does he do? He like hitchhikes with his thumb. Hitchhiking was really big too in the 70s. So they're hitting all the 70s popular things. And he puts out his thumb and they all just disappear. He, so he could teleport. And he's like, they got away. So he's got to go. He, he activates this device and he, he, he contacts the master, tells him that they got away. And then he, he gets vaporized into dust because the master is a jerk and toying they teleport they're in new jersey looking at the statue of liberty and it's like what's going on now it's like we we got powers he goes we're powerful for the first time in our lives you know we could, we're not even human i mean we have powers with this we have this what do we do and here comes the moon like they don't realize that the moon is getting big and then the moon lands and it opens up, and it's a spaceship. You know, so it's not really the moon; it's just a, a vessel. And who comes out? But Doctor Doom. It's a parade of gypsy girls, hot, sexy gypsy girls. Doctor Doom is leading the parade, and you know they're just watching. And uh, he's like, "Oh, you know, I I wanted to open the box of Kish. It was part of my mother's uh, witchcraft gypsy trinkets, but I couldn't open it." You know, and it was hidden from me. It was stolen. And now you guys open it. So which means I own you because that was my mother's box. You you opened it up. So now I own you. You're, you're my slaves. And they're just like, what? We ain't slaves. So the, the, the sexy gypsy girls take out machine guns. And Gene Simmons knows something's up. And he blasts them. They're robots. Like, oh, they're factory girls. All right. They, you know, they, they were too chivalrous to attack the women. So now they're just beating up all the robots. Gene Simmons is like, what? You know, look at this. this Ace Freely has beat them up because he's super powerful. He's like Wolverine now. And then Ace Freely just like, hey, let's get out of here. And he, he teleports them all. So, you know, and where are they? Whoa. They're way out. That's where the fun is. So they're teleporting through the universe. And then what, what's going on? Of course, J. Jonah Jameson, he wants pictures. So he's got to send out Peter Parker. He goes swinging out. Who are they? Where are they? You know, they're beyond time and space now. So t time is, is is a little flexible. So like a couple of days are passing for us, but uh, but not too much time is passing for Kiss. So the Fantastic Four, besides, I think they're cuddly looking. I mean, he's just like, they're ugly. Because, of course, I think they're cuddly looking because they're uglier than me. You know, da -da 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 -da. And the Avengers are on the line. And the, you know, the Vision's like, we got to keep track of these people. That they're, they're super powerful. You know, I don't know what's going on. So we, we're going to talk to somebody who knows about this stuff, Dr. Strange. So Dr. Strange is just like, yes, I've been advised. I've been watching this casket of Kiss for a long time, you know, but I'm not going to do anything. We're just trying to get uh, appearances in this magazine. And of course, he's friends with Dizzy. The uh, He was the holder of, of this MacGuffin box for, for 30, 20, 50, 60 billion years. Well, however long it takes to tell the story. That's how long he was holding on to it. 
and now they're, they're monitoring that the kiss are beyond time and space because ace ace has to, you know they, they have to learn how to master their powers which which i kind of like i hate when people just all of a sudden have master so he goes downstairs and he talks to the defenders what are we going to do so here's you know the current steve gerber at this point was writing the defenders you know we got daredevil nighthawk uh red guardian dr strange valkyrie uh son of satan and hulk and he's like what do we do we're just gonna hang out so that was just like two pages of just you know cheesy little like introduce people who may just be rock and roll fans in, in, in into uh marvel comics characters yeah it works whatever you know and here we got uh advertisement for cream magazine you know again know your audience you know a lot of a lot of kiss fans are buying this stuff so rock and roll fans you know, we got to, we got to, we got to capitalize it on. And here is an article. So that's, that's the first uh, part of, of the, of the comic that it, that's over. So now what do we have here? We have an article about, yeah, I love this. Uh, this is how they extracted the blood and took the blood samples, put it in this <laughs> novelty kiss box, you know, to transport it to the, uh, to the printing press. So here, right up, here's the doctor, you know, they're all like mugging it up for uh, Look at his face there. Space Ace, just out of his mind. Gene Simmons, you know, that same doctor taking that blood. And then, that's a cool picture of Ace Freely. Peter Chris, Gene Simmons, you know, Paul Stanley. That blood's coming out. And this is my favorite page in the whole book. Now, <laughs> it's an advertisement to, for Air Latvia. Let Latvia spirit you away. So what do we got here? We got a graveyard and beautiful mountains. And you know what I mean? Like Latvia, the planes crashed. <laughs> At last, the Carter administration has lifted all restrictions on far travel and Americans could once again visit the tiny kingdom nation known for centuries as the Jewel of the Balkans. Latvia, land of enchantment. Latvia, where the smell of incense and the smell of gypsy mag magic are so uh, so pervade the atmosphere you could almost feel your skin crawl latvia by day stroll her quaint cobblestone streets visit the shops where skilled craftsmen still manufacture watches cabinetry and sub miniature sub miniature ruby lasers by hand at night prowl her black her back alleys you really haven't lived till you spent an evening or two in latvia and biestro sipping aphrodisiac potions and tapping your toes to those blue uh, those Blues Improvations, The Black Forest Five. And winter sports enthusiasts will find Latvia a wonderful skiing, skating, tobogganing, and of course the famous outdoor robot gladiatorial matches. Latvia, with no pollution, no crime, no politics by decree of the government. Air Latvia has more flights to this magic kingdom than any other airline. In fact, we're the specialists. We only fly to Latvia. Let us spirit you away. Midnight flights from JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark nightly. Liberal discounts on advanced bookings, charter flights, and excursions. And don't forget to ask about our special plans for defectors. You know, we get you there. Getting you back is up to you. Air Latvia. I just, I don't know. I find that uh, amusing. <laughs> and we got Hit, Hit Parader, another rock and roll magazine. We got this cool kiss centerpiece. So this is the middle of the magazine. Where no man has tread before. So this is a, a the history of actual Kiss. So his his band. This is again a a, a, a biography of, of Kiss. More photographs. We got that. We got Bloody Jean. We got Chris looking like a jerk. Man, look at that. Oh look how look how look how dreamy Paul Stanley is. He's dreamy over here. We got Kiss. We got Jeans. It's funny because he to me he was like the embodiment of Kiss. Here's the discography up up to this point. You know, look at them just you know, I I do I do like Kiss. I do like Kiss. Their first six albums are, are masterpieces. And here's his back backstage scrapbook. With Patty Smith over there. You know. Uh, we got uh, uh, Robert Plant and Steve Tyler. And here's chapter two. So they've been traveling the cosmos, like, because of uh, Ace Frehley's, you know, he's not really understanding how to use his power. And they're in heaven. And we got this archangel over here. Or pencil art by John Vicima on in this chapter. And they're just hanging out. So we got Gene and Paul. And, you know, this archangel's like, hey, look at this. We got hot chicks over here. You know, hey, you know. You stay here forever, and he's like, "Pardon me if I sound skeptical." He goes, "Of course, mortals are on." Un... Paul, I'm going to split. You staying or are you coming? You know, he's like, "What do you mean you gonna leave? You can't leave." So the uh, cherub starts shooting arrows at him, and Paul's like, he, "He's like laughing." Nah, how you, you, you know, you, you, 
these chicks, I like this. These chicks act like they just discovered boys. I don't want to break their hearts. So he just blasts them. And he's like, no, that's slow. Even for you, blasted angels. And it turns out they're really demons. He blasts the archangel. And who is it? It's Mephisto. Lord of the... So he's like, he was going to tempt them and, and lead them and keep them in hell. So now he's like, oh my God, these are demons. You know, and look at these. We still want you. Why don't you want us? So now... They're like, we're not going to fight. So he takes his boots, dis disengage and attack Mephisto. You know, he's attacking the uh, the uh, the, the succubi and he's blasting them all with this thing. And they, this is what they actually look like. This is their true form. The, the boots fight Mephisto. <laughs> Gene, uh, Gene Simmons is flying around, you know, battling in it out. And he's just like, Mephisto's like, listen, guys, I want you freely. Stay here. With the, you, you have you have to agree. You know, I'll I'll always be after you until you agree. And he's like, okay, well, we don't want to go, so he has to let him go. Now, Peter, Chris, and, and Ace Freely, they they land on some planet at the Andromeda Hustle. This is Chapter Three, uh, art by Alan Weiss. So, this is disco. So now they're in a disco you're with all these people in makeup. So they kind of fit in, you know. So like, oh, this is pretty cool, you know. Let's let's dance. And he makes eye contact with this cat chick. She's she's checking him out. He's like, whoa, I like you, you know. And they start dancing. And what happens? Like, you know, he goes, uh oh, there's gonna be trouble. So he's taking her to the back room. And like, D -d -d Mando is Big Leo's queen, and little Tommy long for the satellite. So he's like, uh oh. So she's doing the old flirt with somebody else when she has a boyfriend. And they're dancing, they're, they're flirting, flirting, and then here comes Big Leo. So everybody here is like an animal-based thing. And she's like, he thinks, meet Big Leo. Leo thinks he's my old man. So apparently this guy likes her. Maybe she, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. She doesn't actually uh, like him. and she, So she wasn't leading Peter Chris on. She just, you know, can't get away from this, this overbearing guy. He's like, this is my friend. They're like, yeah, we'll take care of you. So he starts, you know, the, he starts up. Uh, He's starting to learn how to use his powers. So here he is, these little arrows. So he, he's doing his agility. He's doing his agility. And what does he do? He summons like a pyramid. So a space pyramid to trap him in. You know, this cool thing. And he goes to kiss the girl. Big Leo breaks out. He's fighting him again, fighting him again. And then what does he do? He he does the hitchhike power again and they teleport. So all of them show up in Latvia now. So now they got to deal with, with Dr. Doom in his home territory. Uh, art by Rich Buckler and John Buscema. Okay, so here we go. So they show up in Latvia now. And Dizzy's there, the, the homeless, crazy character. Play hard, play fair, nobody hurt. So he's telling them what happened. Like, I I, I was holding on to this box until the prophecy. I, I always hate that trope, the prophecy trope. And and you guys fit the bill. So, you know, when you got, you were the only ones that could open it. So Dr. Doom considers you his property. And here come the monks to greet him. Man, they're really robots. So they're shooting laser beams. He, they all got super strength because what good is being a superhero if you don't have super strength? So they're, they're, they're blasting all the robots apart. Peter Chris jumping around. Paul Stanley's got the super agility. And, you know, <laughs> this is just stupid. The whole mountainside opens up into lips and it's like sucking them in in a kiss because, because why not? And so he's shooting laser beams at it. They're fighting. They get sucked up into the kiss and boom, everything explodes. And Dr. Doom shows up to fight. So Gene Simmons is getting a punch on, onto Dr. Doom. How cool is that? <laughs> They're all getting taken out by Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom, he's like, even you were a kid once, Curly. So Ace Freely says, like, think about your childhood. And he's like, huh? I was a kid. I was a kid. And he, moment of doubt. And Paul Stanley can manipulate emotion. So he uses that moment of doubt to uh, really, like, mess up Dr. Doom, who is now feeling overwhelmed by emotions of the death of his father. He's like, oh, he's like, all right, get out of here. You know, you made me think of my dad. And then this guy's like teleporting around. He's like, you, you, you cost me this, the, 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 my slaves, the subjugate them and whatever. He goes, uh, you guys, you know, this guy actually defeated Dr. Doom. No man invokes my father's name. Then strike me down. He goes, I can't, I can't. Cause you, you gave a speech at my mother's you gave my mother's eulogy. Get out of here, everybody. I'm sick of this whole mess. So they didn't actually beat Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom kind of just let them go because whatever. Stupid, stupid story. And they make it back to New Jersey. They take all their things. They put it in the box, 
you know, the box of Kiss, you know, so they say, this is a job for Kiss. So now they're gonna form a band. Right, stupid. Now, subscription, fill this out. Some magazines, portfolios, you know, just to see all these uh, photographs of Kiss. And then here's the, the Marvel team that actually did it all. Here's what they all look like. Here's their albums. You can buy the albums, back cover, Dr. Doom. And there you go. That's Kiss. Marvel Super Specials number one. So this one, I, they started a, they, a whole series. The next issue, I think, it, it is uh, Close Encounters the Third Time. So they, they started these these oversized editions because of because of Kiss. So there you go. That's that. I <laughs> terrible story. <laughs> I like the art. I, I'm amused by by the whole spectacle and, and and nonsense of it all. But I'm not gonna lie. It. it it, it was bad you know i they could have written so many different things i'm this is just i don't know sometimes steve gerber i just i'm just kind of kind of a i don't know doesn't really write the best so there you go dan this is for you i hope you like it and you know what i'm gonna end the video on this